think a lot of us are trying to find ways to make extra cash and I'm going to show you how to make cash out of what you have in your closet that you don't wear anymore. Stick around, keep watching. I'm going to share with you all of my tips and tricks on how to get started selling your old clothes on Poshmark. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jessica of the blog of Miss More Style and here on YouTube, I make videos about affordable fashion, beauty, lifestyle, and travel. So make sure to hit that red subscribe button, ding the notification bell so that you're notified when I upload a new video. And also you can find me over on Instagram and TikTok where I'm always sharing fun fashion inspo and also some silly things too. Okay, so let's just get right into it. So you want to get started on Poshmark. I have had a couple people request this video and so I wanted to go ahead and make it because it was giving me a little bit more motivation to list some more stuff on my own Poshmark. So if you want to check out my Poshmark, I have it all linked down below. Shameless plug, but my Poshmark is like full of clothes that's really cute and has barely ever been worn. So if you're looking to find a good deal, go over there, make a deal with me, we can talk. This video is going to be more about how it started on Poshmark and the things that I've sort of learned that are best practices when um, listing items and all that good stuff. So, so you've just cleaned out your closet. Now you've got a pile of clothes that you want to get rid of. The thing that I usually look for and when I decide whether to donate or to sell something is what condition is it in? Because if it's stained, if it has some damage, um, if it just looks worse for the wear, I go ahead and I take it to Goodwill because I just feel like things like that are not going to sell on Poshmark. So just go ahead and just get rid of your damaged stuff. Another thing that you might consider, is this a current style? If it's not, you might also have a hard time selling it on Poshmark unless it is a vintage item that is like really cool and like a style that people are kind of looking for. Like for example, right now, a lot of people are looking for like 90s stuff. I know like the 70s is also something that a lot of people are really into right now. So just consider that because if it's like something that's really not in style at the moment, it probably will just sit in your listings for a long time and not move. Okay, so next, photographing your items. Your photos are so important. They need to look crisp and clear and quality. You want to attract people to your listings. My first thing that I always do is if the item that I'm selling is something that I have been photographed in, like for, let's say, like my Instagram or my blog, I always make sure to pull those photos from wherever they exist for the listing. And I know not everybody is an Instagrammer or a blogger, but let's say you wore something to a wedding or you wore it somewhere and you have a good photograph of yourself in it, go ahead and grab that and put it into your camera roll. If you don't already have a photo, what you need to do is set up a space to photograph your items and you need good lighting. Now I have studio lighting because I'm a YouTuber and a blogger, so I have a ring light and a bunch of lights to really provide good lighting for my photos. And if you're really serious about doing Poshmark as like sort of a side hustle, then you might consider purchasing something like that. But if you don't want to, it's no problem. Just set up your area where you're gonna photograph stuff next to a really big window in your place that gets the most natural light possible and photograph your items during the day using the natural light from the window and it will look great. Consider what is going to be behind you when you're taking the photo. You wanna make sure that whatever is behind you is not too cluttered. So pick up things, make it look nice, clear space because nobody wants, like it's just not appealing when you see a listing and the background is like a lot. Another thing that you can do also if you're serious about Poshmark is consider buying a backdrop. They sell so many on Amazon. I bought one on Amazon for like not too much money and you can change out the backdrops. You can get different color backdrops, all kinds of good stuff. So that is something to possibly consider if you have the funds to do so. For me personally, I know a lot of people post photos on their Poshmark listings of just the item hanging on a hanger or laying flat on the ground. And while I think that's fine, and I did do that for a long time, I found that a lot of people would comment on the listing and ask what, it, like if I could post a picture of me wearing the item. So what I started doing is now instead of taking pictures of things hanging, I always try the thing on and take photos of myself wearing it. Okay, so I am here in my office. I am ready to take some photos and put up some listings. So I'm gonna show you all basically how I do this. First of all, you're gonna be taking photos of your items on your own body. I would suggest to wear a super basic outfit. So like a white t-shirt and blue jeans, just a top and a bottom that will go with basically anything um, because that way, no matter if you're putting on a bottom or a top, um, whatever you have on on the other half of you, if that makes sense, will go with that thing. 
If that, does that make sense? That's my little tip. Now let's snap some photos. So you can see my lights and everything are all set up behind me. I've got this little remote Bluetooth clicker that I bought for like a couple dollars on Amazon. These things are great. They work with iPhones and Androids. And basically this allows me to um, push the shutter button on my phone when I'm standing away from it so that I can get those pictures of me wearing the item. Don't mind the pile of crap. That is why I am getting my Poshmark-ish together. So I got my phone into my little tripod. I'm gonna flip it around selfie mode, obviously. And then you just wanna stand back and make sure you're all in the photo. I try to hide this clicker in my hand so it's not like super obvious. What I do is I take a photo straight on, then I turn, give it a side profile, turn to the back so they can get the view of the back. Then I come up close and I do like some detailed shots of this pattern. Then I wanna show that there's like this uh, chevron like edge to the sleeve and for this garment I think that is enough photos because it's like doesn't have like a ton of features and things going on. So you want to take as many photos of each garment as you think is necessary to really give potential buyers a full picture of what that garment looks like. That really helps people to see what it looks like on a person. I also am not really very um, inclined to purchase things on Poshmark when they're just on a hanger. That just doesn't give me any sense of what that thing looks like on. I understand that like not everything that you might sell on Poshmark might fit you. I mean, part of the reason why you might be decluttering your closet is because things are too small or too big. So what I've seen a lot of people do is get a dress form and then they put their clothing on a dress form and photograph it on that. And I think that also works really well too. Poshmark isn't just for clothing. You can also sell shoes, you can sell accessories, you can sell makeup even. So if you're selling something that's not a clothing item that you would actually put on, make sure the setting that you are photographing that item is like aesthetically pleasing. Think about how retailers photograph items like this and the setting and the lighting. Maybe add a couple little decorative elements in there to make it a little bit more appealing. I mean, you can really like have your own style in your photos. And I think the more appealing and the more professional looking you make your photos, the better chance you have of selling your listing. Now, a big little cheat thing that I have discovered very, very recently and started using is this app called Photo Room where you can take a photo and it will erase the background of that photo like that. It is so freaking cool. And I've been using this to sort of create a cover photo for my listing. So like I said, I will take a bunch of photos of me wearing each item, but then I'll also lay the item flat on the ground. In addition to that, take a photo. And then I use this app to basically erase the disgusting carpet that I have in my apartment. What I'm left with is like a solid white background and it gives it like a little drop shadow. It makes it look so professional. And I've been using those as my cover photo for each listing so that now hopefully going forward my shop will start to look a little bit more cohesive and just more professional and it's also a great little cheat let's say if you have ugly carpet like I do or you just got lazy and didn't want to clean the background behind you you can easily get rid of it with this app it does have a little watermark on it in the free version but low-key you can just like zoom the picture in a slight bit and get rid of that watermark so it's not in the frame anymore and then you don't have to pay for the app pro tip Another thing to do while you're photographing each item is to have a tape measure handy because one thing I found is a lot of people want to know the measurements of the garment before they buy it. And it's really annoying when people comment if you can tell them the measurements and then you gotta go find the thing and measure it and tell them and then they don't end up buying it anyway. I mean, that is the freaking worst. So try if you can to provide measurements from the get-go. So if it's pants, measure the inseam, measure the waist. Um, if it's a shirt, like measure the length, maybe the bust or from the uh, armpit to armpit type of thing. Um, and write that down as you create the listing so that when you go into the next step, you have all that information. Another thing you can do that's even easier, if the item you're selling is currently still being sold, you can go to the retailer where it's being sold, find the product page for that product, and then I would just take a screenshot of the measurements, the size chart that they have listed for the thing that you are selling, and then just add that in as one of your photos in your Poshmark. That's a super easy way, but obviously I know a lot of people when they are reselling things, they don't have an item that's like currently being sold. So just have a tape measure and try to measure if you can. It will make your life a little bit easier and it will help your buyers feel a little bit more assured when they go to purchase the item. Now that you've taken your photos for each item, go in and list them. So what you wanna do is upload all the photos that you took and then when you're creating your listings, always remember, Keywords are key. So try to be as descriptive as you possibly can in your title, like really describe what the thing is. Your description, you have a lot more characters. So really 
describe in even more detail what this garment is, um, what condition is it in, give people details on the fit, give people details on the feel of the fabric. People also like really like stories. So if you can sort of find a way to write like a witty description that sort of tells a little bit of a story about the garment or like give somebody some sort of imaginative idea about where they might be able to wear that item. I find that people really, really like that. This is also where you would include measurement information if you measured your garments. And another thing that I do also, because sometimes I get lazy about measuring things, is I include my proportions and dimensions in every description so that people can also kind of go off of that to see how it might fit them. Much like I do in my haul videos where I tell you guys my height, my weight, my bust, waist, and hips. I also do this in my descriptions. And an easy way to do this every single time without having to type it all out is to create a shortcut in your iPhone. For me, if I type Z three times, it automatically types all of this measurement info that I've already input into my phone. I'll put a link in the description box for a website that teaches you how to create keyboard shortcuts on your iPhone. If you're not aware, I don't want to go too much into that, but it's such an easy like hack for just always like putting that big chunk of information right in there without like in like two seconds. Now that you've got your listing, definitely put in the correct category of what it is. Is it a top? Is it a sweater? What kind of sweater is it? Like go into their categories and choose the most close category that you can provide the size. And then it's time to set the price. Now I always, and I have learned over the years that you need to set the price of your item higher but quite a bit higher than you want for it or that you expect someone to pay. People on Poshmark are there to get a deal and I don't blame them, I do the same thing. But realize that when you make your price, that is your starting point for a lot of people. Very few people are gonna just like purchase your item right off the bat. A lot of people will send you an offer or they will put multiple of your items in a bundle and then they'll want you to give them um, a better deal for the bundle. So I always price my items like a, a little bit up from what I expect to pay and not a crazy amount because I don't want to like set my prices so high that people are like, hell no, but just a little bit up so that that way when people negotiate with you, there's a little bit more wiggle room there where you both can come away happy and satisfied. So you've published your listing. Good job. My advice would be when you have a bunch of stuff to list on Poshmark, don't list it all up in one go. Poshmark is a social media app, much like other social medias. It does like you to consistently post over time. It, try to spread out your listings over time if you can. The other thing that you want to do is once you've got your listings up, you always want to be resharing your listings on a daily basis. So just make a habit going into your Poshmark and just going to the bottom of your closet and resharing the ones that are at the bottom so that they come up to the top. And that way everything sort of cycles through. When people go into your closet and they leave a like on your item, I always go in and I send a private offer to likers only. So you can um, either like in each listing, you have the option to like drop the price like publicly, or you can send people who have liked it previously a private offer. I always do this because sometimes because people will get a notification that, that you sent them an offer for the thing they liked. And sometimes that offer is like just the little nudge that that person needed or the like temptation that they needed to hit uh, purchase. So just a little tip there. Always participate in posh parties when they happen. So when you go on Poshmark, you'll see like, you know, tomorrow there's going to be a, a Lululemon party. The next day there's going to be a boho style party. So more often than not, some of your listings in your closet are going to fall into these Poshmark parties. So make sure when they're happening that you participate and share your relevant listings into those parties. And then you will get seen by more people. Additionally, always be resharing listings of people on Poshmark that you follow. It's just a nice thing to do. And I think it helps you in the Poshmark algorithm. It's just good karma because other people will share your listings as well. Make sure that you share your Poshmark listings on other social media. I know that there's like the option to send um, your listings to Twitter, to Pinterest, Facebook. I usually send mine to Twitter and to Pinterest because I feel like that's the least annoying thing. Um, and then every so often I'll go on my Facebook and copy and paste the link of my Poshmark closet and just say a post. Like, Friendly reminder that I have a Poshmark and you can shop it here. Lots of stuff is like almost brand new or barely used. People will go shop and I do the same thing on my Instagram. I get so many people coming from my Instagram to shop my Poshmark, which is great. A lot of times what I'll do when I'm doing a day where I'm photographing things is every time I put something on, I'll 
do like a short video clip of me wearing that thing and then I'll take all those little short video clips of all the things I photographed, put it into a short little video and put that on like TikTok or my Instagram stories or reels and tell people like, hey, new listings on my Poshmark closet. And that's another great way to promote your closet and get people to go over and check it out. When you make a sale, I don't think this is, this is definitely not necessary at all, but I think it's important to try to package your items in a way that is appealing and nice. So maybe order some bulk tissue paper off of Amazon and then you have like nice tissue paper to wrap your purchases in. Anytime I shop online and I get these like plastic mailers, I always save them and set them to the side and I reuse those um, to ship my Poshmark sales in. I feel like it's a good way to recycle things. Um, but when I do, package things I try to wrap it in a nice tissue paper and then put it in and I always include a handwritten thank you note and my business card obviously if you're not a blogger or you don't have like a boutique on Poshmark you don't need to put a business card but I cannot tell you how many times I've gotten like positive comments on my shop because when people got their package and they opened up the little handwritten thank you note um, they just they really loved it and it made their day so establishing like nice good relationships like that with people is like a really positive thing and then they will have a positive experience with you and that might bring them back to your shop to shop more. And especially if you're on social media, like I am, like people have come and followed me on my Instagram also from those nice thank you notes that I left. Usually I'll say something to the effect of like, hi, so-and-so, whatever their name was, who's purchasing. Thank you so much for supporting my little shop. I hope you enjoy your blank, whatever the thing was that they purchased. I know it's gonna look, I'll say like, it will look fabulous or it'll be great for blah, 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 blah. Like I, I try to like personalize it in a certain way. And then I say, if you're ever looking for fun fashion inspiration, go follow me on Instagram. Here's my handle, shameless plug. Lately I've been saying stay safe and healthy because you know, Corona, XOXO Jessica. And people love that. So obviously it's not necessary and it's not always something that I don't always package my things nicely every time like at the same time realize that you are not Louis Vuitton you know it's a five dollar sale so don't go over the top but try to make it as appealing as your budget and your time allows you to is what I'm trying to say hi it's me different day no makeup. I just wanted to mention something really quickly um, that I did not mention while filming this video. I asked on my Instagram stories if you guys had any questions for me or answer in this video. And one of the things that I did not address in this video was re getting old listings to sell. I have quite a few old listings in my shop myself that have been stuck there for a while. And while I have not tried this, what I have heard from Poshmark is that if you run into this problem, you're not moving some of your older listings, it's better to just completely delete them and then just create a new brand new listing for that item. So that helps it, I guess, in the algorithm or the feed somehow. And that might be a good way if you have something that you've just had for a long time, just relist it completely brand new listing and delete the old listing another thing to consider with old listings that aren't selling is you might need to ask yourself if this item is you know appealing or if it's going to sell on poshmark that's something that i'm really running into myself with my inventory that is really building up the more i declutter my closet i don't have a whole lot of storage space to hold on to stuff to sell on poshmark so i'm probably pretty soon going to go back into my inventory and really take a hard look at the stuff that's not selling that's really old and make a decision whether or not i want to just delete those listings entirely and just go ahead and either donate those clothes or ask my friends or family if they want those things because sometimes some things just they don't move on Poshmark. The other thing, and the last thing I will suggest um, is to, like I said earlier in this video, offer those clothing items up to the likers. So look and see if those old listings have any likes on them. If they do, there might be some hope. Send a private offer, like a drastically lower price to those likers and see if any of them bite. Also, anytime they have a closet clear out on Poshmark, participate in that drop your prices by 10% or more and Poshmark will actually email all the people who like that item and let them know that they get discounted shipping. And guess what? The discounted shipping when you participate in Poshmark Closet Clearout, Poshmark actually pays for that discounted shipping, not you. So that is a huge thing to always participate in if you see um, that going on, especially if you got some old listings that do have some likes on them, uh, but haven't sold yet. And again, if something is really old and it's never been liked before, you can try just deleting it and reposting it, but you also might wanna consider just maybe getting rid of it, donating it instead of trying to sell it.
have basically talked my own ears off. I hope these Poshmark tips helped you. Leave me a comment down below if you have any questions or any other advice or tips maybe for me or anyone else who's looking to sell on Poshmark. I would love and appreciate that. I'm always looking to up my game. While you're here, you definitely want to check out these videos. They are super, super fun. So don't go anywhere without checking out a couple more videos. Make sure to subscribe if you are not subscribed already. Give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps me out in the algorithm so, so much. And uh, I'll see you guys on my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.